All right, welcome everyone. We're just gonna wait a few more minutes. I always give the guys and the ladies and anyone for that matter two, three, four extra minutes just to get joined up. Let me post on Facebook. Boom boom. I'm going to make a quick Facebook post and do a quick Instagram video. I love showing you all that part. So you can see, hey, we're really out here doing this. This is the real deal. Community, join us now at the link in our event page as we speak about common time and the international baccalaureate middle years program. That's my best Bruce Buffer impersonation. Did you know there's actually two of them? There's like a Bruce Buffer and a Michael Buffer and they both do announcing and things of that nature. So that was my best buffer impersonation. Just did a Facebook post. Let's hit Instagram. Let's see what the gram is up to. Okay, let's go for a quick live. You heard it first. Everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, hello, greetings, salutation, whatever you need for me to feel welcome, you've got it. Head on over to our Facebook page right now. We've got an event going on called Common Time and the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program. We're gonna be talking all about the IB MYP for any of you teachers out there that are veteran IB teachers and even some of the new ones who I definitely used to be, we're going to be sharing with you now some of the inner workings of the arts guide for the IB MYP and exactly how you can use common time to enrich what you're doing. Go ahead over to our Facebook event and join us now. All right, folks, and that's that. And with that, it is now 8.03 my time, which I think is called GST, Gulf Standard Time. I'm out in the Gulf. And no, not the Gulf of Mexico for all my Florida people. I am in the Arabian Gulf in Dubai of the United Arab Emirates. So let's get started. Like I said in my introduction many times, my name is Michael Skillern, and ooh, we want to list titles. Professionally, I am the head of music at American Gulf School in Sharjah, UAE. I am also a timpanist and percussionist with the National Symphony Orchestra in the UAE. And for you this evening, afternoon, morning, I am the education and outreach coordinator for this platform, Common Time Online. And today, in our weekly webinar series called Wisdom Wednesdays, we're going to be digging deep into the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program and talking to you about how Common Time can really just nicely insert itself into what you're already doing. So this one is for our IB teachers, our veteran IB teachers, our new IB teachers. I was once a new IB teacher and common time is something that I really, really could have used. So to get more specific, and I'd like to also say that the International Baccalaureate, for those who don't know, is a framework for education. And I'm going to be using some terminology here that some of you that are teaching in the US curriculum or in IGCSE or in one of the Canadian curricula, 
you might not be familiar with these terms, but once I explain them, you'll find out that these terms are synonymous with what you're already doing in your classes. So don't feel intimidated by some of the vocabulary. Um, I'll try to speak to these vocabulary words in a way that makes it clear to you that I'm not excluding any educators here. We're just using these terms because well, I guess because I chose to write this webinar from the lens of an IB teacher, maybe because I'm an IB teacher, but um, wow, these webinars sure are a great opportunity for self-reflection, aren't they? I feel like the thinker, except less statue, more man. All right, let's dive into it. So we're gonna be discussing the Middle Years Program Arts Guide with the International Baccalaureate. And we're gonna look at a few different areas those of which being global context, the four criteria or objectives. We're also going to look at grasp and performance tasks. And we're going to talk about how common time can help you with those. So first things first is global context. The International Baccalaureate is huge on global context. Michael, what's global context? Let me tell you my interpretation of global context. Global context is why are you learning this? Why are we learning this? You know, I know that I'm not going to be a professional musician, so why am I learning this? The International Baccalaureate, excuse me, has outlined six kind of lenses for global context, six ways that you can take what you're learning in class right now and expand it outside of your four walls and maybe make a connection with something else. So those six lenses are scientific and technological innovation. If you take what you're learning, for example, in my beginning band class, that was our global context. And there is a sub context under that heading called product innovation. So we've been talking about how things change over time, how our instruments have changed over time, how our own music making has changed from soul fed singing with body percussion. Then we move to playing and reading rhythms with drumsticks. And then we move to blowing air through balloons. And then finally, we move to actually playing wind instruments. So we have in our classroom, our product, our instrument has innovated. Hmm. Can you give me an example of another product that has gone through innovation or change over the years? The iPhone, Mr. Michael. The Xbox, Mr. Michael. Now we're going, why are we learning the trumpet? We're learning the trumpet because just like our music making has innovated over these months, there are other areas of your life that have also innovated due to science and technology. The next lens is fairness and development. Fairness and development. Um, and I'm thinking through the lens of a music teacher. It's like, why do we play in communal musical settings like choir and, and band? Well, we want to promote fairness and development. What does fairness and development look like in the band classroom? Maybe it looks like blend and balance, but blend and balance are so finite and so laser specific focused toward band. But if you start calling it instead of blend and balance, maybe you call it fairness. Now you can start having conversations. Where else in our lives do we see fairness? Where else do we need fairness? Flutes, I can't hear your melody at measure 30. Where else in your life have you not been heard? The next lens is globalization and sustainability. Globalization and sustainability. Hmm, how can I connect that to the music room? Um, one issue a lot of us, so one thing that I read about recently was a beginning band director who started using plastic reeds for her beginners. One, because beginners, they all destroy reeds. Every beginning band student's middle name is Destroy Reeds. My name was Michael Destroy Reeds Skillern. Even though I play percussion, I probably still destroy some reeds. So when we're asking why are we learning a band instrument? Well, maybe you could tie some of that into, hey, we're learning a band instrument because we have the opportunity to use plastic reeds and practice being sustainable. Where else in our lives do you see people trying to be sustainable? 
My mom gave my clothes to Goodwill. Secondhand clothing is a way that some people try to be sustainable. So we're not wasting all that water growing more cotton, for example. Personal and cultural expression. How do different cultures express themselves? How do we express ourselves? What are some of the byproducts of expression? We're not just playing our fight song because our team scored a touchdown. We're playing our fight song because we're celebrating a positive moment. Cultures celebrate a positive moment. How do other cultures that are not football team marching bands celebrate positive moments? Now you're expanding your learning through global context. Okay, orientation in space and time. Orientation in space and time. Things that are important to us are important to us usually because of the context that they're in. When you think about the 90s, I heard a comedian speak about this when he was talking about Space Jam 2, the movie. Space Jam 1 wasn't an Oscar winning film, but it was Michael Jordan, it was Nikes, it was Bugs Bunny, it was the 90s. When you take Space Jam 1 out of the context of the 90s and hip hop culture and urbanization and that, it's just a movie. But when you orient it in space and time, now we get something that is generational, something that is, um, a pillar of a lot of people's childhoods. And for me as a younger guy, that was really what cemented Michael Jordan for me. I didn't see the championships. I didn't see the rings. I didn't see the game five game winning shot against Utah. I didn't see those things, but through movies like Space Jam, which helped to cement our orientation in space and time, that is something that um, I was able to hold on to. Going back to, to, let's talk about maybe for drama and for theater, when you're talking about getting into character, when you're talking about building sets, you're orienting yourself in space and time. But when you do that, you open yourself up to exploring that space and time outside of your script. You're adding global context. The fifth or the sixth and final lens is identities and relationship. How do we form identities? What is the byproduct of identity formation? Do multiple peoples have an identity? How do we build relationships? Um, thinking about, let's pick a new discipline, dance. Thinking about dance improvisation. How does dance help in identity formation? And then how can you express your identity in ways outside of dance? When you start focusing on identities and relationships versus just dance, you're giving students that why. You're giving them the why we're doing this, why they need to learn this. Now, that's what global context means. And those global contexts, I think, could be used in any educational framework, any curriculum. But the thing that those contexts are missing, because the point of the global context are that they are generalized across all cultures, across all people. No matter where you go in the world, you can find examples of fairness and development, but they're missing faces. They're missing actual people behind them. And that's what common time can add, the people. Common time, helps add global context by providing a qualified artist, a dancer, an actress, an actor, a thespian, a musician, a painter, a sculptor. They provide actual people through the lens of qualified artists that are well-versed in the cultures that they study to actually add a face to that global context. I have to go back to music because I'm a music teacher, but I told you the global context for my beginning band class is scientific and technological innovation. And we're tracking how our music making has innovated from body to instruments. And we talk, we use that product innovation lens to talk about the parts of our instrument. Our instrument is a machine, you know, it has pieces like any other thing that's manufactured. And when you look at that, I'm thinking of Dane Yu, 
who is out of Germany and she is an artist on the Comment On platform and she's a harpsichord expert. So when you're talking to your music classes and maybe they're doing a composer of the month and you taught them about Mozart or you taught them about Scarlatti or other classical and before uh, pianist, you can have someone like her to come in and actually talk to you about the differences between the harpsichord, the piano, and the organ, maybe she could even include that. And she can put a face and a name in a live, real-time example to the innovation of how the piano has changed across the years versus you just explaining to your class and having some other type of less engaging educational experience when you're discussing music history and let's say a music appreciation class. If you're working on photography, for example, in your visual arts class, why not have sessions with, I think, Janice Yintima, who is out of Brussels, who is one of our verified artists on Common Time and have them come in, kind of give a window into another world. So when you're talking about personal and cultural expression and you tell them that different cultures celebrate and express themselves in different ways, why don't you actually bring in one of those different people from one of those different cultures. So she can talk about some of the art that she's making and she can talk about how herself from a real life different culture expresses herself in her feelings and her goals and her objectives through her art. So you're actually putting a face and a name to these global contexts. Whether you're exploring your identity or your place in the world, cultural expression, science and technological changes, being sustainable, fairness, civil rights, a common time membership puts global context at your fingertips by actually putting a face, a name, a live, engaging educational experience to some of these. I'm trying to think of some other examples. When you talk about identities and relationships, you could bring in Jasmine Akakpo, who is one of our featured common time artists, who is an actress in LA right now and Atlanta but you could actually bring her in to give context on how people that work in television are forming identities about characters, how they go from the script to the screen and actually make these people real. We know that all over the world, people form identities about themselves, but bring someone in to actually speak on it. We have another artist named Farzin, who is a Persian artist and plays the Kamanche, which is an ancient string instrument from the region. You could actually bring him in to talk about what that instrument means to him and his people and how his musical identity is shaped through that culture and through that history. All right, next, let's talk about grasps and performance tasks. So grasp is not, grasps are not something that are explicitly listed in the IB Arts Guide to my knowledge, but it is something that's commonly used um, with all types of teachers, especially IB teachers. Grasps is an acronym that stands for goal, role, audience, situation, and product. In my school, we use grasps, and that last S is for standards, because they're really trying to drive home those standards. But we're going to focus on the R part of grasps, which is what is your role? Our students aren't just preparing for a beginning band concert. They're professional musicians. Our students aren't writing a book report. They're journalists. Our students aren't going around the school taking pictures of circles, they're photographers. Our students aren't, you know, performing cats. <laughs> they are actors, they're singers. We're making it real, we're making clear career connections to give a why to our students. And then lastly, or secondly, you've got the performance task. What are your students actually going to be doing? That's the situation or the goal part of grasp. But zeroing in on the role, if your students are singing in a concert and their situation is a concert, 
their goal is to perform well and their role is as a singer, why not have a session with Christine, our founder and CEO, also an accomplished um, opera singer. Why not bring her into your classes to actually give some context and some details about what that role entails? What do singers do the night before a concert? What do singers do if they feel like they don't know their, the words to the song well enough? What do singers do minutes before a concert? How do singers combat nerves in different environments? You want your students to fill in the role of a singer without actually putting professional singers in front of them. Now, of course, educator, choir director, I know you're a professional singer too, but there's more. There are more out there. Um, going back to visual arts, we have a lovely a painter named Kanchana out of India who's on our platform. Why don't you bring her in to actually discuss the role of a painter? What is her job? What does she do day to day? How does she come up with new things to paint? When's the last time she had an art show? Have your students actually meet a real person that's filling the same role that they're feeling so they can see themselves outside of themselves. Did I just get too deep? Let me say that again one more time for the people in the back. If your students are doing a performance task, whatever you're assessing them on, that's their performance task. That task is gonna have a goal. The students are gonna have a role. The student's goal is going to be presented to an audience. The students are going to be participating in this goal through a particular situation. And the students are gonna be presenting some product of sorts. Why don't you bring someone in that fits the role that you're trying to get your students to fill? You know, it's kind of like when you go for a job interview, you want to fill a certain role. You oftentimes interview with someone who's been in that role. The reason why companies do this, we look at education, for example, when I interviewed for my current job, I had an interview with the principal who's also been a teacher for a long time. That serves two, two purposes. Number one, I get to see who at the school currently is in my role. So through that conversation, I can see, okay, this person's talking this, this person's talking differentiation, this person's talking concept-based learning. That's what they wanna see from my role. And then two, that person interviewing you knows the role. So when they're interviewing you for the role, they have the actual context where they can put you mentally into situations and see, okay, this person fits at my school, this person doesn't. Bring in the person that fills that role that you're trying to get your students to fill. All right, so we've talked about global context. We've talked about grasps and performance tasks. Now we're gonna get into kind of the nuts and bolts, which are the four criteria or objectives in the middle years program. These four criteria are what your students are going to be doing during class and how the IB defines their learning. Criteria A or objective one, knowledge and understanding. The International Baccalaureate partly defines learning in the arts as having knowledge and having understanding. Number one, acquiring that knowledge in context. Number two, being able to apply that knowledge to an art form. And then I think number three is being able to extend that knowledge um, potentially to different contexts, using that knowledge for something else outside of your classroom. All of your common time artists are experts in their field. So if you're trying to build subject or discipline specific knowledge and understanding about any one given arts topic, common time is your last stop. It's the end all be all. If you're trying to teach about piano, if you're trying to teach harpsichord, like we talked earlier, if you want to teach world music, if you want to teach percussion, if you want to teach art, if you want to teach dance, if you want to teach dance history, if you want to teach giving monologues, when it comes to knowledge and understanding, we'll be home for knowledge and understanding in the arts. The students will receive a wealth of knowledge from our artists. Likewise, if you have a common time artist come in towards the end of the unit, working with one of our guest artists can actually be a real test for understanding because it's like, okay, you might understand what 
ABA form is in music, but when you're speaking to Farzine, like we mentioned earlier, and he starts talking about Middle Eastern music, can you still identify form outside of our Western lens, outside of whatever context you learned it in? We've learned how to read music, and some of you use ta, t t ta, the kadai syllables to teach rhythm in your music classes. I'm sorry I'm so music focused, but that's my wheelhouse. But if you bring in Pranoy, who is a tabla player from India, and you hear him beatboxing rhythms, can you still hear those rhythms that you learn? We know you know quarter notes, but can you hear it in that different context? Building knowledge and then using our cross-cultural connections to put it into different contexts and show real understanding is one of the hallmarks of the Comments on platform. And that's one way that we can help you promote knowledge and understanding through the use of a professional guest artist in your classes. Criteria B or objective two, the second one is skill. I think the two strands of that are building skill and technique and then using that skill and technique in the context of an art form. The example would be the toy boat, toy boat, toy boat vocal exercise that some actors do, and then actually using that to pronounce words in a script with proper pronunciation. Um, a visual art example could be learning how to use the f-stop feature on a DSLR camera versus actually uh, using that feature to take pictures for artistic purposes. For music, um, it's simple. Um, doing long tones on a brass instrument to build up your embouchure and build up your tone quality versus actually playing a piece of music. When it comes to building skill, hosting a guest artist in your classes on the Common Time platform, once again, is the one-stop shop. Our artists can be booked for individual sessions, group sessions, all day visiting artist sessions, half day sessions, and whatever else fits your need. We kind of promote collaboration between the user and the presenter so that you all can both be very clear about what you need and what you can do. When, and that all that goes to say is, if you have a few speakers, like maybe some of the leads in your theater production, you can have them do a small group workshop with one of our thespians on the Common Time platform as a guest artist, and you can help them build that skill. If you are working with um, the violins in your orchestra, you can have them do a sectional. You can even book a Common Time artist for five private lessons and have each one of your students in your viola section um, receive a private lesson to build on that skill. Something I thought of when writing this webinar is Common Time gives you a unique opportunity to have centers in your room. So when you're working to build skills, you could consider a center style class where you have a small portion of your students working with a Common Time guest artist, building skill in that small group, really detailed fashion. You know, having another, and I think most of us would agree that teaching skill takes the most feedback. You know, learning the fingerings on oboe is as easy as looking at a chart. But pressing the fingers down with great technique does best in a one on one setting. So hosting a common time guest artist in your classes is almost like having another set of eyes, another set of ears, even if it's just for an hour. You know, building skill becomes a lot easier when you can bring in one of our guest artists to start working with your students individually or in small groups or in large groups. And this really, really give them the eyes, the ears, the context and the information that they need. Criteria C, or the third objective, is the creative process or creative thinking. And I don't remember the three strands of that offhand, but it comes down to creating art with a clear artistic intention 
um, creating a plan and making choices for your art and then making changes to that plan as necessary. And um, maybe there's something in there about realizing that the world contains inspiration for art. In the visual arts class, when you're doing artist research and you're learning about different styles and different mediums, when you're gathering information, planning, working to execute an artistic intention, having a common time artist come in to give a guest artist class in one of your classrooms can give your students a truly unique and relevant perspective into the mind of an actual artist. You want your students to think like artists. Obviously, our students are not going to be professional actors or professional painters. Some of them might, but most of them won't, unfortunately. We, but that artistic thinking is what's going to make their career. There's a reason. There's a reason that a lot of people with arts education end up in some of these high profile positions. You know, I have a friend who is on the forefront of genetic science to the point where he is using computers to re-engineer proteins that can then be inserted into DNA strands that, for example, he was able to invent a new corn that is, I don't know the details, but maybe his new corn is resilient. He did that by being able to invent microscopic nanorobots that can go in and insert and delete parts of proteins that can then be put back into DNA strands. But if you think about it, that's so creative. Everything that he did, I watched his dissertation. The individual parts of what he had done have been done before, but the way that he synthesized them into this new method that he's pioneering is the creativity. But why was he able to think like that? Well, he's a genius first off, but in my opinion, he spent 20 years of his life playing the cello, learning music composition, learning music theory playing music by some of the greatest composers that have ever lived. And he was able to really dive deep into that idea of creativity. You know, Steve Jobs, without creativity, doesn't make iPhones. He's going to be probably, you know, working at a tech company doing a regular job. You know, Bill Gates without creativity doesn't bring the PC home and out of the big closet space where it lived, you know. Elon Musk, without creativity, doesn't make flamethrowers for his boring company. He would just continue making cars, you know. Um, ingenuity without creativity, technical skill without creativity uh, is not profitable and is oftentimes not successful. So the creative thinking is one of the most important things we can impart to our students. What better way to do that than actually let them get in the mind of an artist. Let them interview a photographer from our platform. Let them present their work and explain their process to one of the painters on our platform. Let one of our solo um, musicians from the platform come and talk about the lead up to a concert. Have one of the composers on our platform actually workshop one of their pieces and talk about how they went from the blank page to a full symphony. Have them actually enter the mind of a real life creative so that they can start to internalize that creative process and what it means for them. The fourth and final criteria, criteria D, is responding. The objective is responding. And this means being able to critique the artwork of yourself and others in a meaningful way, realizing that art and these ideas exist in other cultures, and being able to connect what you're learning in the art world to other areas outside of this particular class and this discipline. Bringing in a common time dance artist towards the end of a unit on uh, folk dancing, for example, can help students take the knowledge that they've gained during the unit and maybe transfer it to a new authentic situation. All of the curricula out there have some common core cause of aesthetic evaluation of the arts. I think IGCSE calls it responding. 
but we don't often give our students opportunity to respond to someone's art of another culture in real time. You know, we often show a lot of resources to our students about taiko drumming or about African hand drumming or this or that. But are we really able to answer all of our students' questions on this matter? We're just kind of showing it to them to just check off a box that we did world music. We looked at music from outside of their culture. But to have that question and answer, to have students inquire about what it's like to actually live in this culture, to have students learn two words of Mandarin from Brenda, who is a, a percussion artist out of Hong Kong, to have students give feedback and critique and ask questions in real time to a real artist who lives and breathes in that culture is the true essence of having your students respond to music or dance or theater or this or that or visual arts. That's the true essence. So, Long story short, when it comes to giving your students the why we're learning this through global context, when it comes to giving your students detailed insight into the role that they're feeling as an artist, when it comes to giving your students insight into knowledge and understanding beyond your own, when it comes to giving them information on skill at a detailed, personalized level, when it comes to being inside the mind of an artist to truly understand what it takes to go through a creative process, when it comes to allowing your students the opportunity to respond to music in real time, common time is the way to go. Refresher, common time is your all-inclusive home for arts education. We live up to that standard by providing high quality, live, virtual, engaging sessions with verified common time artists and arts organizations on our purpose-built all-inclusive platform. We want to empower artists by allowing them to set their own rates, set their own specialty in their own available times, and giving them the power to host events, webinars, workshops, masterclasses through our platform's built-in audience, and also have a free to use video conferencing platform that's there, ready, no audio processing quirkiness. We want to engage learners by giving individuals and educators a home for extended arts education, a home where they can find artists across all disciplines that fit their need and bring them in on demand. We want to engage learners by giving them and the people that teach them access. And we want to expand arts outreach by giving artists and arts organizations a home to host their live virtual content and also their pre-recorded content. We want to connect educators, artists, arts organizations, and individuals through those goals and techniques that I mentioned beforehand. And you as an educator can use those same ideals to further impact your students with context, impact them with giving them a role and showing them a face, impact them by imparting knowledge, understanding, skill, insight into creativity and the opportunity to respond to the arts. All of these things are possible with a membership to the Common Time platform. Head over to www.commontime.online. Sign up as an artist if you want to teach. Sign up as an individual if you want to learn and sign up as an educator if you're looking to engage students. If you're an arts organization looking to expand your outreach, through no hassle virtual programming, sign up as an arts organization and start booking artists in your room today. You need guest artists. You can head over to the blog page on commentime.online to see my previous webinar about exactly what a guest artist can bring to you in your classes. And as always, I can be reached at michael at commentime.online. You can find us on Facebook and LinkedIn at Common Time Online and on Instagram at Common Time dot online. Thank you for everyone who joined the day. If you're unable to join, just like with the others, we'll be uploading this on our blog in its entirety shortly. Thank you.